Oh, yeah, folks, it is that time, once again, to be freaking at the Freaker's Ball, right here live on reallibertymedia.com on this Friday night, February 22nd, 2019. And this is the last Freaker's Ball of February for this particular year. So, uh, yeah, yeah, welcome everybody to it in all the various places that you may be tuned in from. Uh, but if you're not on the video stream and or on the uh, RLM, uh, <laughs> reallibertymedia.com uh, site where, where the show page is there, then uh, you're in the wrong spot. I would, I'd be, you, know, you can listen on the audio if that's all you got availability to if you're on the phone or whatever. But, uh, yeah, and that audio stream does go everywhere. Uh, yeah, we have it on the rlmradio.xyz page. We have it on... Uh, what? Oh, freedomsnetwork.com, realliberty.org. We're on TuneIn Radio. We're on Internet Radio. And, uh, a few other spots. And again, and we'll be on the, uh, on, on the Spreaker tomorrow. And what, which will put us on the YouTube. Which will put us on the bit shoot. Yeah, we get out there. We're everywhere. So anyway, uh, welcome to everybody out there that may be listening in all those various spots. Moose Girl will uh, join us momentarily. I hope. Uh, she seems to be having some kind of issue here, <laughs> but it's not her computer. It's uh, some stupid uh, uh, batteries in a wireless mouse, which I, I'm not a fan of the wireless mice, unless you absolutely need to have one. But uh, for that, most people, you're sitting at home, sitting at a desk, you just, just get a just get a regular wired mouse. Uh, that always works the best. Um, anyway, so there's that on that. But let me say hi and howdy to all the folks here. In the Real Liberty Media chat here on irc.freenode.net. That's pound pound Real Liberty Media on irc.freenode.net. Yeah, we got the barman and we got me. We got the moose girl and DC. And we got as Mo and Chelsea Doni and Gooberzilla. Miss Graham Z did a great show again. Always does a great show. Uh, earlier this evening, we had Don C. himself. We got the Ponder Gander, Mr. Vin E., who did his show earlier today, the Ponder Gander. Yes, indeed. We got Miss Kate and Rain and uh, Fluke. Now, just just a little note about Fluke. When, when Sock Puppet first told me, hey, you want to check out this cloud bot? I'm like, uh, all right. And I played with it for a little while at first, and then I ignored it because it wasn't, I didn't quite understand the whole Python thing and how to get the thing installed. And But then he came back around and said, hey, hey, check this out again. So I did. And I got it up and I got it working. That's fine. But after that period of time, uh, Miss Grammy, Miss Grammy decided that uh, Fluke, RLM Fluke, was a female bot. Uh, and I guess because Barman is a male bot, or oh, he's got man right there in his name, so... So she decided RLM Fluke was a female bot. <laughs> anyway, I never really grabbed onto that too much, but whatever. Uh, so tonight, when I was I was kind of goofing around during her show, and I decided I would set an icon for the uh, desktop shortcut that I created on over there on my uh, Linux machine, uh, and, and so I found a picture of this hot female robot. <laughs> so Fluke is now a hot female bot. Anyway, so we got Rob Works, we got Rooms, we got Mr. Vin E, yeah, so easily. We got the Phantom and Beetle and Benoit and the Kim Trailer, Cyborg Noodle. We got Frumpy and, and a guest, which I do believe is JJ's right there, that guest. Uh, we got Java Doctor and Kozu. We got Kiss and Moe and Mountain Man, a.k.a. somebody from Oregon. We got Nelson Dubois and Pone Sauce, the sock puppet himself. Tech Man, that's another person. I'm not really, I'm not positive who that is. We got Uno, the Uno bot, and we got Miss Donna Van Meter. Yes, indeed. Little hottie from California. <laughs> oh, you too could have a V host like this. Yeah, yeah, that's terrific. All right, anyway, so uh, that's everybody. Now I'm uh, just trying to see what Moose Girl is up to here. She can't hear anything. Yeah, I, I know who Pone Sauce is, Sock Puppet, but, you know, I wasn't going to reveal it. <laughs> so, um, 
Uh, all right, so Moose is uh, uh, having a problem there with something or the other. I, I don't know what. But you know what? I'm going to give her some time to figure it out. And and during this particular time, I, I guess I'll go ahead and play some tunes. Um, she's having problems with her headset, with her mouse. I, I, I don't know what all's going on over there. And Wait, wait. I, I hear a call. Okay. Let's see. Let's see. Maybe she got it figured out. Did Let's go. Hello, hello. Well, she called. I don't hear her. <laughs> but she did call. Um, so she's on there. She's connected in some way or another. Uh, I, uh, I, I'm, I'm not positive what's going on on, on her on her end of the computer. Um, but uh, yeah. All right, Moose. Um, I, I don't know what's going on. So here's what I'm going to do: is I'm going to play music anyway. And then we'll come back and and uh, if you if you need some help, let me know there in the in the wire chat and, and I'll if you can hear me. I don't even know if you can hear me. Oh, oh okay. So we changed something last week because she broke this. All right. Well, we'll figure it out during the set here. Um, <laughs> all right. All right. Uh, so we'll kick it off with some jams as we do. And where's my where's my recorder? There it is. Okay. Rock and roll, kiddies. Yeah, baby, squeeze my lemon to the juice runs down my leg. <laughs> Led Zeppelin traveling Riverside Blues there. Yeah, we before that we had the Who and I can't explain. Kicked it off there with Soundgarden and Spoonman. And now we got, now we got the Moose. I, I hear you now. You sound a little, little, uh, little, uh, little rough. I don't know. It's, just, it's not as smooth, not as smooth as your normal self. You sound fine. You sound fine. Why am I hearing that echo now, Jerem? I, I don't know, but I, but I got you on the recording now. Okay, but it's so echoey. It's something's wrong. I need I need to not be on stereo mix or something. Uh, I, I don't know. Now I don't hear the echoey. Okay, good. Okay, so it, it cleared <laughs> itself up. All right, All right, right. nice. So, so you yeah, the issue now. before. Anyway, okay, so there's that. We already have freaking 40 goddamn inches on the fucking ground already. All right? All so right. now there's this one. Significant flooding risk identified in no clear area. It's like, no shit, Sherlock. How much fucking snow do you think we fucking got on the ground? Five fucking feet, bitch, you know? Anyway, so the National Weather Service put out a report about the flooding in the Eau Claire area, the possible flooding in the spring in the Eau Claire area. Right. And normally the, the risk of flooding is 7%. This year it's 30%. Wow. So it's a significant increase. I mean, this is a record-setting snow for Eau Claire. And if, it does, if we get a slow, a fast melt, it could be really ugly. Not to mention that all the snow up north, when that melts, it goes in the rivers up there, and it comes down into the Chippewa River, which is in Eau Claire. It makes its way down, you know what I mean? Okay. And so it's going to be, the river is going to be brutal. And I mean, it, it could be very, very interesting because it could be a total flood here, at least in the areas that are near the river, like right on the river, you know what I mean? Right. There's going to be major, there could be a possibility of major flooding. Like, we've never dealt with this amount of snow. If it's a record, that means we've never, we've never um, experienced this amount of snow. Yeah, and the Chippewa River eventually flows in the Mississippi River, which is not good either because Minnesota, Minneapolis, where the Mississippi also flows right through the Minneapolis, which I'm from that city. That's my hometown. The river flows right through downtown Minneapolis. So if the Chippewa flows in the Mississippi, the Mississippi is going to, and they already have a shit ton of snow in Minnesota because they've set records in Minnesota too for snow. So it's going to be like a brutal spring. That's my prediction 
um, as far as flooding and stuff like that, especially if it melts fast. Right. You know, we want for a slow melt. It's like weird because Matt's like, why do old people always talk about the weather? It's like, <laughs> you got to know about this shit. You got to know if there's going to be flooding. If you live along the river and you know there's a record setting snow, you got to be ready for flooding in, a, in like a month. You know what I mean? When it right, starts to melt. Right, right. You got to prepare. I mean, it's not stupid to talk about the weather, especially when it's, you know, affecting your, you personally or your property. Right, exactly. You know what I mean? I yeah. mean, you, you, it's not something you take lightly. Like, kids, they don't understand owning a home. You know what I mean? They don't understand stuff like that. Yeah. So they, like, just take it for granted. You know, oh, you guys, oh, you're just old. All you do is talk about the weather. No, that's not a bird, Vinny. That is my dog playing with a, a, a dog toy that still has a squeaker in it. And it's a Kong <laughs> brand dog toy. Yeah. So it drives it nuts because it still has a squeaker in it. It's made of, like, like plastic, kind of, like an acrylic or whatever. Right, like right. Soft plastic. And he, it drives him nuts because it still squeaks and he can't get the squeaker out. Every other toy that he has that has a squeaker in it, he's already destroyed it. He's got it out of there. This one drives him nuts because it still speaks and he can't get it out. <laughs> sure, yeah. You know, he's a dog. It's like a bird or something to him, you know. But, yeah, that's that's my dog toy you're here. <laughs> that's the dog toy, Vinny. <laughs> that's my dog. <laughs> he's a puppy still, so he's still TV, you know. Right. But anyway, so now we have this concern. And pretty much every home in Eau Claire has this issue right this year. And that's called a thing called ice dams. Ice dance? Ice dam. D-A-M oh, is in Michael. Okay. Okay. And so anyway, um, what happens is you get a bunch of snow on your roof, and since the home is heated, you know, the roof is a little bit warmer, you know? Yeah. So the snow melts, and then it, it drips down, and that's what creates icicles and shit. Well, then it also creates, like, this thing called an ice dam, where it just freezes solid, and it's just like... It, it can cause damage to your home. Sure. Because it it just, I'm sure Sock Puppet could explain it, but he doesn't live in a northern climate. But it's just not good for your house. It, it's just, it can create damage. It can cr damage your roof, can damage your gutters. Um, yeah. So here's the, oh, also I posted it twice. Oh, wow. That's okay. Yeah. Anyway, um, so we totally have this on our house. Oh, okay, that's right, Sock. You lived in a northern climate before. So, yeah, you know what I'm talking about then. I, I figured you knew what I was talking about. Just You probably haven't dealt with You don't deal with these down in Florida. I know that. <laughs> yeah, he went, he went as far south as he could get. <laughs> right. I, I, I hear you there. I mean, seriously, this winter has me questioning my sanity. Like, why do I keep living here? Why do right, I keep enduring right. this 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 weather, this, this brutal weather. Because, I mean, it's it, it's hard because the summers are so beautiful. Like, three uh, three seasons out of the four are awesome. You know, it's just yeah. this fourth season that just sucks ass so bad. You know, it's just like, ah. I don't mind the winters. And this winter's been brutal. We had that record-breaking temps of minus 53. It was like the temperature was literally minus 23, and the wind chill was minus 30. It's like, that is fucking brutal. And then it was sure. solid ice everywhere. And it's like, you can't walk on it. It was solid ice everywhere for a fucking week. Wow. Oh, Matt tells me now, quit complaining about the weather, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's like, you have to question your sanity. You're like, why do I put up with this crap? Right. You know, granted, it's kind of fun driving in it, you know, driving yeah, in the snow. Yeah. But, you know, your wheel wheels, but seriously, I had to dig my wheel well, impacted snow out of my wheel wells with my, the, the end of my, my uh, the scraper, my uh, snow brush, you know? Right. I had to fucking push that thing in there and, like, dig that snow out of my wheel wells. Because I drove around when it was snowing and shit, and there was snow all over, so that it just piles up in your wheel wells, you know? I can yeah. seriously hear the, the tires hitting the snow that's, that's in my wheel wells. It's like, that's not good, you know? <laughs> when you turn the corner, it's like, shh, It's like, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the stuff you have to deal with, you know? Yeah, it's well. crazy up here. It's like, okay, this is nuts. It's like, we all, we all we tell everybody, this is fucking nuts. We are nuts for living here. You know, it gets to a point, you're like, all right, I can't do it no more. <laughs> right, right. 
You know? Oh, my God. Wow. Yeah. I mean, you saw some of the snow pits, Graham. Oh, right? yeah, I saw them. I mean, yeah, yeah. I yeah, mean, yeah. I can, you can post one if you want. You know, if people want to see it. I mean, I but it was brutal. I mean, most people didn't see them, but yeah. it's like, oh, my God. No, it's not up here. It's like. But then after a while, you get you do get kind of stir crazy, like you kind of like start going a little bit nutso. You really do. Yeah, like it's a fever. real thing. Like you start going to nutso. Is that what you get? Cabin fever. Yeah, you get the. It's a real thing, cabin fever. And then I had to laugh at this article that they put on WEU today. I'm like, dude, it's a no brainer. You didn't even have to do an article on it. Everyone like feels this way. So here's the here's the headline though. You might you you're gonna laugh. You're gonna laugh. Winter weather may negatively impact your mood. Really? You think? <laughs> you know, I don't wanna go out and fucking minus fifty three and take my fucking dog out. <laughs> I really fucking don't. You know? My poor dog's paws are gonna fucking freeze in that kind of weather. It's like duh, that's a no brainer though. Everyone knows that winter weather it negatively impacts your mood after a while. <laughs> yeah. It's fucking crazy. Uh, anyway, I do, so I that's do better. my I... big story is the weather. I mean, it does run your life. Matt gives me shit for talking about it, but you have to fucking know what you're doing. You have to know how to drive in it. You have to know how to walk in it. <laughs> He's like, you live in Wisconsin. Yeah, but why do I? I'm questioning the reasons why this year, Matt. This is insane. This this has been too much. It's too much. It's just too much. I, I'm a true Minnesota person, he says. Whatever. I'm from Minnesota. I live in Wisconsin. I'm starting to see, be like, this is bullshit. Okay, so now there's this other story that you have to worry about. Kids playing in snowbanks. What's wrong with that? Um... If snowplows come by and they don't know there's a kid in a snowbank, they could, like, or if a car comes by and they don't know there's a kid in there, like, if it's on the street, like, let's say it's on the boulevard or something. Right. You know what I mean? And they're playing in it, and the, the a driver might not know that there's a kid in there or might not see a kid darting out into the street or something. You know, because it's happened before where kids are hiding in the snow and a driver of a, a vehicle, like a plow truck or just any vehicle, did not know and, you know, they were hit and killed or whatever, you know? Sure. And then plus there's the other fear of, you know, everyone says, oh, build a snow tunnel, build a fort, build an igloo, you know? Yeah, well, guess what? Kids and other and adults have died from doing that because it collapses on them and they get buried, like, like being, being buried in an avalanche or something. You know what I mean? Right. And so it's nothing to mess around with. You got to know what you're fucking doing. You know, with weather, because you could you could die very easily. <laughs> I'm just saying. I mean, when it's minus fifty three temperature, and let's say you're in the middle of one place going to another place, and you break down in the middle of that. In, in the middle of those two places, and it's like the middle of nowhere, mm -hmm. you're basically fucked. Yeah, yeah. If it's minus 53. I right. mean, unless you have a sleeping bag and a candle or some kind of heat source yeah. or whatever, you're fucked. You're fucked. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You will perish. You will fucking die. You will freeze to death. It's a real thing. It can happen. Sure. You know? Nick keeps saying, it's Wisconsin. <laughs> yeah, that, it is Wisconsin, Matt. That means you need to be ready for anything that can happen, for any kind of weather. You have to be ready for anything, except maybe hurricanes. You have to be ready for, like, brutal cold, freezing rain, torrential downpours, tornadoes. <laughs> it's like, you know. And massive mosquitoes. Yes, massive mosquitoes and wood ticks. Oh, yeah, well, that was a fun. Yeah, don't forget about fucking wood ticks, you know, those lovely things. Right, right. So, yeah, we have our challenges. Uh, living it sounds in the like it. You know? I, we yeah. are tough, hearty people. We fucking laugh at it. And you eat a lot of tea. And that, that, part of that is we're going crazy, but we're laughing at it, trying to be tough and just laughing at it, going, ha, 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 you're not going to get me. You're not going to kill me. <laughs> I, can, I can do this. I can do this. Like, we're, we're freaking, t we're tough. Yeah, we're fucking yeah. Tough. I am tough, dude. I did my fair share of shoveling. Don't be giving me no crap, son. He's, he's sitting here in the peanut gallery over here making comments, my son. 
Yeah, well, that's that's what kids yeah, are for. Well, he's a sassy teenager. He yeah. still has teen in his name. He's like, oh, I'm getting old. I'm like, dude, you cannot be getting old when you still have teen in your name. Your <laughs> age, I mean. You, you, if you're still 18, if your age still ends in teen, no way are you fucking old at all. <laughs> you're still a teenager. Just, just tell him, never trust anybody over 30. Right. Well, he doesn't. <laughs> what do you mean, what's wrong? I am not lucid. I am pissed. I'm, I'm, I'm surviving winter here, dude. Come on, give me a break. <laughs> I'm dealing with five feet of snow in my fucking town. Right, so we got, we still got a Seriously, couple hours anyway. You can't drive, you can't so. drive. Like, you go up to an intersection, like on the side street, and you can't see around the snow banks. Because they're all piled up. Ben was. And so you have to, like, just take your chances. You just, like, look. It's better at <laughs> night because you can see headlights. But during the day, you just kind of look and try to peer up there and try to inch out a little bit, you know? So, so, but after so, a while, you just have to commit and just go for it and hit so, the gas and just hope the fuck there's no cars coming. <laughs> sock, sock Puppet is saying you got balls. It's crazy. It's crazy. I have some balls. They're internal balls. <laughs> but I do got them. Yeah. You know I do. You know I do. No, he's you know, definitely a tough gal. Women can still have balls. Even though ours aren't external like dudes are, we still can have them. Uh, ACDC sang they a whole them. song about it. They did. Yeah. Big balls. The lady, no, um, no, no. She's no got, way you suck up. Really? No, you no. would? No, you wouldn't. She's no, you got would balls, not. not big you balls. You are too nice. You would not do that. Most. If most. you mean by cooking me an awesome meal, by bus, that, if that means cooking me an awesome meal, I'm all for it. Moose. Busting my balls. What's <laughs> 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 <Well, it's> here? <laughs> <laughs> it's it's not big balls. That's not the song about that. It's she's got balls. Oh, okay. Oh, that song. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you were talking about. Okay. They like ball songs. Uh, huh? Well, yeah. You know, it's good fun stuff. They're, they're a thing. You know, balls. Well, that's part of it. <laughs> Jackson's got getting balls. Well, he should. He's a he. he he's he's all his. He, yeah, they're almost um. What do they call it? Balls. <laughs> almost or something. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, he's he. I don't think he's going to have them for very long, though. <laughs> oh, oh, you're doing the chop chop. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. 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 We'll see how he behaves and stuff. But That's a horrible thing to do. Yeah, they like to piss a lot and hump a lot when they're not. Hey, you know you could you could you could stud him out. I could stud him out. He's 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 purebred, right? Yeah, he is. You you got paper? Uh, yeah, I could register and get papers for him. You bet. There you go. That, I could stud him out. That, that could be worth you know whatever. I but get. it has to be somewhere close by. It can't be like in Iowa. I mean, it may be Iowa, but if you're only making five hundred bucks and you got to go to Iowa, how much gas money are you going to spend? No, they could bring. Much, they, you know, uh, just just cut out your dog. Just uh, let them fuck another dog. It's like, <laughs> no, no, you, you they make them bring their bitch to you. That's true. You should do it that way too. Yeah. What the hell you think this is? I mean, if they're going to give me $500 for my dog to impregnate their, their bitch, I'll do it. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Come here, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> That's a female dog. That's a technical term I know, for female I know. <laughs> and that's the wording people use. They use stud and bitch as terminology for making it happen. Right. Rub it, bump it, uglies. <laughs> <laughs> Bitch and stud. I got a stud. <laughs> I got a stud dog. Woo! I'm just kidding. <laughs> he, uh, he's probably sitting over there grinning. <laughs> yeah, probably. He's, yes, he's probably looking at me going, Hell yeah! Hell yeah! yeah. He's stud, like 13 baby. right now, but in like four months, he's going to be like 18. <laughs> yeah. Dang. But, yeah, anyway. Yeah, I was doing some hits. Is it 420? No. It's, four, it's, it's, it's 1040. It's, Close enough for me. Well, see, it's, it's 840, which would be in California. Right. It's that, 1040 well, but, for but, me. But, but 8, 840, that means you got to yeah. do twice as much. Oh, I'll, no problem. Yeah, I'll do that. Yeah, 420, you take, a, you a, take a hit or two. 
But at, at right. age 40, you got to take four hits. <laughs> okay, I can do that. I will do that. I like that idea, actually. All right, let's, let's go back to some music here. All right, let's and, do that, people. And, uh, hey, by the way, yeah. are you going to do monkey, those monkeys requests? I will, but not this set. This set okay. is um, the first the first of a couple of sock puppet set requests. Okay. And um, I'm not positive. He, he had some dedications here, but I'm not mm -hmm. sure I got it right. So he'll have to tell us in the chat. Okay, uh, cool. Who, um, if anybody... Oh, who, ahead, who, who, if anybody, these uh, songs are dedicated to? So <laughs> he doesn't say who they're dedicated to. Well, he he told me, but I, I kind of had to like close my chat client, and then he post pasted some stuff up there, and I tried to read it, but ah, whatever. Oh, okay. I'm not positive. All right, well, I, I know the we'll I know the third we'll the third song the third song in this set is dedicated to Kate. The first two, Ooh. I'm not sure. Um, but he can tell us there in the chat, and then we'll, All right. and then we'll know. I'm looking forward to this set. Should be yeah. good. Enjoy, people. <laughs> Absolutely. Macy Gray. All right. Well, there you have it. Uh, weird little set we had because we had some little issues going on, but uh, we got it all. We, we made it through. Uh, anyway, that uh, last track there was Indigenous with Evolution Revolution, a dedication to Kate from Mr. Sock Rabbit. Before that was a country girl, Magic Slim in the Teardrops dedication to Chloe from Mr. Sock Puppet. And we kicked it off with Macy Gray I Try, a dedication to Moose Girl uh, for, from the Sock Puppet. Yes, yeah, Sock Puppet dedicating to the ladies out there. <laughs> Moose, you with us still? Moose, Moose, did I mute you? Did I do something wrong? I got an area. Uh, no, you're still there. I see, I see the thing moving up and down, but I'm not hearing you. Why am I not hearing you? <laughs> God. All right. Uh, what, what's going on here? I see you talking on the wire, but I'm not hearing you on the wire. All right, let me uh, let me uh, close my wire down. And uh, reopen it. I, I I don't know what the hell's going on. Uh, so something some something weird, man. Something weird. All right. Uh, quit the wire. All right. We're having little issues. First first it was uh first it was the uh, I don't know. Anyway, let, let's 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 try this again. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Oh man. <laughs> All right. Let's see what we got going on here. Something goofy. All right, let me uh, try and call the moose and see what happens. I'm not hearing anything. All right, let's go over here. That should be good. But I'm not hearing anything. Um, why do I not hear anything? That's there. Everything's there. All right, I don't hear moose. Um, bop, 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 bop. I don't know either, moose, but I'm sure it's not on your end. It's something going on here. Um, let me get this out of my way so I can talk. Hello, 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 hello. Right. There hello, you are. Hello, this is the freaking ball. Okay, I hear you now. Earth to moose girl. Earth to moose girl. All right, all right, you're coming through fine. Earth to moose girl. All right. I'm not talking to myself. I'm talking to Grimner Matthew. <laughs> I am not talking to myself. I'm on my head. I have a headset on just like you have on when you play Xbox. Yeah, like, yeah. No yeah. different than that. So, <laughs> exactly. No different than that. Oh, boy. No, I'm not still muted. I have headphones on. I'm listening no, to Grimner in my headphones, dude. That's why you can't hear him, but I can because I have headphones on. Yeah, she's good to go, Matt. Yeah, I'm good to go. That's what Grimmer says. I'm good to go. So <laughs> never mind you, young punk. There, I call him young punk. Uh, all right. <laughs> he's just, he's just <laughs> no, I don't play Xbox. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, whatever, Matt. Here, come over here. If you want to talk, you can come on here and say what you got to say. He's good, he said. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 
Anyway, all right then. Um, yes, you do hear the voice of a moose. That is me. If mooses could talk, this is what they would sound like. Absolutely. The female version. Probably Matt says he don't it, but you know he's a young punk. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, he's still got a lot to learn. Yes, he do. So, but he does do a good job of clearing snow. I have to kill that. Well, he's he's going to get a comment. I'm going to get a comment now. He's, he said, wow. That's all I'm good for. <laughs> 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 no, it isn't, my son. Oh, you boy. help me with other stuff, too. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, how's it going, Grimner? Oh, it's going... It's going. Okay. Did you hear that Peter Tork from the Monkeys died? I did hear that because you posted yeah. a link to it, I think, the other day. There. Yeah, you know, that was my first album. It, it touches my heartstrings. It pulls my heartstrings. And he was a year older than my father. I mean, I didn't realize that Peter Tork was the same age as my dad. When I was, like, watching the Monkeys, I would have never guessed that he was a year older than my dad. Right. <laughs> You know what I mean? Because yeah. he was like the monkeys, on, in the monkeys. Sure, And my sure. dad was my dad. You know what I mean? I mean, no way. It, it, that was when I, when I heard that he was a 77, I was like, holy shit. <laughs> Just like a year older than my dad. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, boy. But the first album that I bought was The Monkey's Greatest Hits. And I was, because this was like in the 80s, you know, late 70s, early 80s or something, you know. When right, I bought right, this sure. Album. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they were, by that time, they were had a, a Greatest Hits album, right? Right. And so that was the first one that I bought. And I was such a dork, dude. I seriously qualified for the dork club just for this reason. <laughs> it's I wrote my name and address on the album. <laughs> Jeez. Think of that. If I lose it or something, <laughs> <laughs> someone would be kind enough to return it to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cause I loved it so much because I was so proud of myself because I had just gotten a record player for like Christmas, you know? Right. Like an actual record player, not like a kid's one, like an actual turntable with speakers. Yeah. I think it was a, like a realistic. It was a realistic. You know, like from Radio Shack. Right, 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 some cheap ass right, 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 no. <laughs> so it was a record player for kids. Oh, okay. Yeah. No. Uh, I did I, have some kid record players, like little kitty ones, you I, know? I think it just held 45s if you close it, and it would oh, start. Okay. No, I never. Oh, close and play. Oh, yeah, okay. No, I never had one of them. Oh, but okay. Okay. Maybe when I was younger, but I was so proud of myself, you know. I had this fucking turntable and two speakers. I was like, I can play my records now. <laughs> <laughs> Such a dork. <laughs> Such a dork, dude. I mean, I wrote my name and address on it. You know, the best thing about that album is I still have it. Here, here's a link for it, you. It, here's a link oh, for you, Moose. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Right, but might, 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 might have been before. Oh, yeah, I remember, um, I remember my friend, one of my friends had one of them. Well, it might have been before your time. <laughs> No, I think one of my friends, like, older sisters or brothers had one of them. You know oh, what I mean? Okay. Yeah, I think it just held 45. Oh, yeah. Yep, yeah, I remember seeing those. Yep. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, you betcha. Oh, yeah, you betcha. <laughs> so you had realistic. You're a step up. <laughs> I mean, no, th this is how dorky I, me and my friends were. Want to hear it? Like, when we were, like, pre- Yeah, 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 sure. Out, like, sixth grade, sure, seventh grade. Sure, lay it out. Lay it out. Six, probably fifth or sixth. Fifth and sixth grade, probably. We would go to someone's house and we would play records and listen to songs and <laughs> dance and stuff. <laughs> like the monkeys in the basement oh. rollers and stuff like that. God. We were fucking dorks, dude. We were, we were dorks. <laughs> it makes you laugh. Oh my God. Those are the days, man. <laughs> 
Right. Like this one friend of mine, she had an older brother that was like four or five years older than her. So he had all these fucking awesome albums. Like, and so we'd go up in his room because he was off to college, you know? Right. And we'd go up there, and her parent, her mom or whatever was like really super nice. She let us just go up there and have slumber parties and shit. We'd just play records all night. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to music. It was like we sounded like we were singing and shit. <laughs> That's how dorky I was. I was a dork. Yeah, well. I truly was a dork. I and, don't think I ever so much to be a dork. I mean, so, I'm better now. Like I've improved. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so much to change. That's like going in look, and they're going, no, nope, you have it. No, nope, you're the same. <laughs> <laughs> Still a dork. <laughs> Funny. Oh, my God. Oh, God. So tell me something dorky from your past, Jim. I dare you. Your childhood. Come on. You had to have done something dorky. You were always cool. I was never cool. <laughs> I, I, I'm not cool now. Um, I, <laughs> sure you are. I don't, so, um, uh, I don't know. You're cool? Uh, uh, okay. <laughs> well, well, when I was a little kid, and uh, I had, I like, I don't know, eight, nine years old. Um, uh-huh. I had this room off this, like, it used to be a garage, and they converted it to a, like, a, a family room and two bedrooms, and, and, and I was, and I was staying in one of them, and people would just come walking in whenever they wanted. I didn't want, like, people come walking into my room. I'm sitting in there, you know, who knows what I was doing, but, uh, reading or listening to music or whatever. So, I built a doorbell out of, uh, like a cardboard box with some some foam for a spring and some metal things to touch together, so that when when so if somebody wanted to come in my room, that at eight or nine years old I was not fapping. Um, <laughs> not even sure. I don't really think I would be capable at that age. Anyway, um, <laughs> but so so yeah, I built the doorbell out of that thing. Um, uh, I did. I used to build all kinds of stupid little electronic gadgets out of just crap like an old telephone i built a radio into it so you could pick up the radio the telephone thing and hear the radio um i don't know those those are dorkies i just used to always sitting there and goof with different crap and uh <laughs> building just various little uh what, what would be known as macgyver gadgets later on in life uh although uh it was not around at you know 1967 68 69 <laughs> That's what I used to do. I was a dork. I was a little dorky kid. I used to sit there. I'd, read, I'd sit there and I'd read the encyclopedias. We had the whole set of whatever they were, uh, Britannica or World Book, World Book. Uh, um, <laughs> so I'd sit there and I'd read those. Uh, just all kinds of various different stuff. Uh, so that, that's what I was a dork, yeah. Yeah, I was a dork too as far as reading because I, I read the same things here and there. I would seriously read the encyclopedia sometimes. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, dork, dork. I was so dork. Oh yeah. Yeah, I'd, I'd go down, I'd go down in the canyon and build forts <laughs> and you know whatever. Yeah. Just dork, right. Dork you know? I was, it was a kid because kids, you're supposed to be a right. dork. That's what we do. We, we that's what you're supposed to be in the well, dark when, when you're a when kid. You're you're a kid to, yeah. yeah. You can't yeah. help it. <laughs> no, you can't help it. You know, you're a dork. You can't help it. You're just there's a dorky stage that everybody goes through. You know, some people grow out of it and get a little bit better and improve, and some people don't. <laughs> uh, yeah, whatever. The fa- family right. was the family was always amazed at the crap I came up with. Right. Well, Matt's made some pretty incredible things. He used to make stuff with like Legos just out of his own design. Like, you know what I mean? He'd have like a pile of Legos. He'd make like little like characters or something or little oh. like the one character I still have it's up on my my little shelf up here he made it out of Legos it looks like a little alien dude or yeah, whatever yeah, yeah I, I uh this, this that that uh, telephone thing with the radio thing I, I had this little clock radio uh huh okay yeah I opened it up and I I, I, I disassembled, <laughs> or disassembled it I took the radio out okay and, and I used that wow. for that <laughs> for, for, for that telephone thing, I put it back together. Right, so like the the like in the circle thing, the the receiver or whatever. Yeah, yeah, the, the radio part. I took that radio. Uh-huh, the part receiver. Out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the, the boards and and the I know speaker, you're talking and the about. Yeah. And then I then I then I took the clock radio back to the store and said, "Hey, this ain't working." And I got my money back. Oh my god, you did! <laughs> yeah. You took it back. Oh my god, no way! <laughs> I did. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 
I did not have a. Well, I, I had some little. That's funny. <laughs> not, not, I, 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 I had my my brother had a chemistry set, and I used to. So did you totally, <laughs> totally dupe them? What's that? <laughs> did you totally dupe them? They gave him like, my money. I don't know. I was. I don't know what it you was. Fooled them then. <laughs> Yeah, you know, whatever. That's funny. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so anyway, I don't know. I just used to do all that kind of crap when I was a kid. That's all. So you took it back. Why did you take it apart? Just to fool them? Like you? No, because I wanted the radio. Work? I wanted the radio out of there. Oh, you wanted? The, oh, so you took the radio out because you wanted that part of it? Yeah, I wanted the radio part for the for the telephone. Oh, okay. She All right. Listen, <laughs> yeah, you were dark. You were dark for sure. Oh no, I've tried Drupal. I, I'm not a fan of Drupal. <laughs> no, he said that before. He has said that before. Whichever, whatever that is. I am a door, a techno tard. Totally. Yeah. That's why I have to have Grimner and Cowboy Tag as my. I have to have two tags. I can't have just one. No, I have to have two. You know, because I'm just that dorky. I'm that yeah. dorky. And I'm cursed when it comes to computer equipment and electronics, pretty much. I'm just cursed. I'm just... I don't know how it happened or why, but I am cursed. When it oh. comes to computers and electronics and stuff like that. I don't know. Machines, machines like me. I, I can't help it. Right. They don't like me, though. Yeah. Why don't they like me, Grim? I, mean, I don't know. I mean to them, but you I, you know, I try to be you, nice. I do. I hear you. I hear you cussing your but computers. Then I, get, then I get pissed off. <laughs> I hear you cussing your computers, and I and I start fucking getting they, pissed, right? And they, it's not their fault. I know it's not the machine's fault. I know that. They hear it, and they, and they know. I have to vent. They're sensitive. I know. That's why I'm trying to be nice to this one. Okay. <laughs> now I really do have to take uh, my dog out. Okay. All right. So we'll, we'll, we play some music and then we'll, we can come back. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cover this story while you take your dog okay, out. Yeah, and do then that I'll... and then I'll be back. All right. So so here it is from uh, yesterday here on MysteriousUniverse.org. NASA launches department dedicated to finding aliens. <laughs> A few months ago, NASA held a conference on ways to detect artificial techno-signatures of alien life, byproducts of civilization like radio waves, pollutants, and garbage. They seem to be taking the search for extraterrestrials seriously and have announced the creation of a brand new department dedicated to searching for alien life. The department, called the Center for Life Detection Sciences, the CLDS, is composed of scientists from inside NASA and from outside institutions, including Georgetown University and Georgia Tech. The goal of the CLDS is, in their words, to answer the question, are we alone? CLDS principal investigator Tori Holer says... We now have scientific and engineering expertise to address the profound question with the clarity of scientific evidence, and we have greater community of scientists ready for that grand challenge. You hear it, Ms. Gooberzilla? They're, NASA's out there looking for aliens. They, they are. So uh, they may find aliens that actually have uh, um, spaceships for us. Acknowledging that alien life probably won't look like a spacier version of life on Earth, uh, the CLDS says it aims to investigate all possibilities of alien life. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna call NASA. And I'm gonna report Goober saying he's an alien. They'll they'll take him in and, and dissect him. Uh, noting that extraterrestrial life may not uh, look anything like anything we would even recognize, according to Holler. The search for life beyond Earth cannot be one-size-fits-all approach. To give ourselves the best shot at success, we need to develop tools and strategies that are tailored to detecting life in unique conditions of other worlds. We are very different, uh, not, uh, not only, which are very different, not only from Earth, but also from each other. Another CLDS investigator, Sarah Stewart Johnson, of Georgetown University defines the goal of her team as finding life as we don't know it. 
And it's good to know that scientists are finally coming to grips with the idea that alien life might be far weirder than we can imagine. And again, far weirder than we can imagine. And again, I point to Gooberzilla. <laughs> right. That's a long ways from the earlier attempts at, yeah. <laughs> at contact that include uh, things like launching a gold record into space with the avant-garde oh, on the uh, Voyager, I think it was called. What? Launching a gold record into space? What, yeah. what the fuck? No, no, no. They, they put other stuff in there, too. They put, But they but it was, they had stuff on, on a gold record, various languages, and music samples, and all kinds of stuff on there. Uh, it's fucking weird. Well, whatever. They did it, and they, it, it passed out of our solar system. Uh, yeah, already, you know, you you got to have a plan. you got to have a destination. You can't just, I'm going to just blast off into space, and everything's going to be better. <laughs> yeah, you'll be dead. Uh, so anyway. why even tr try to blast off into space? Just, uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, Viger. I mean, that, what the fuck? Uh, Viger, that's from uh, Star Trek when they when they picked it up. <laughs> But if you want to fucking, you know, really mean business, fucking call up Elon Musk or fucking, what's that rich, rich Richard Branson? Yeah. You know, he's the one doing the Mars thing. Call him up. Right, up. right, right, call right. Fuck, and, you know, you got better luck doing it that way because he's got a lot more fucking money than you do. I guarantee you that. Okay, well, to go on here, okay. that we that weird alien life may be closer than we think, too. Recent surveys of the planets. Maybe it is. Uh, the re re recent surveys of the planets and moons in our solar system, right here at home, have shown enticing leads in the search for life. Oh my God! Who wrote this article? Uh, somebody on Mysterious Universe. Um, the, the, it's barely written. It seems like they don't believe in UFOs at all. No, it says I think they do. Uh, the the okay. subsurface ocean of the moons of Saturn and Jupiter are most likely candidates. And I'm telling you, Europa has life. Yeah, that's all there is to that. Anyway, but other work has shown that there may still be life on Mars or even on the boiling hot surface of Venus. How? Because so they're I, different species. They're well, not a human. Right, right. They can handle it or whatever. Uh, the Center for Life Detection Sciences will start small with only a few teams to lay the groundwork. But they say that as pro as the project matures, more scientists from broader fields will be added. What they need there is some people that uh, are are t that take acid. That's what they need. Right, exactly. Yeah, definitely. It says NASA is still operating the SETI project. SETI was not supposed to be part of NASA, but whatever. Uh, which, which scans the skies for radio waves of unknown extraterrestrial or origin, alien radio waves. Have have been in the news again uh, yeah, lately we as, about that as the sec ago. second anomalous fast radio burst was observed, coming from the same source in January of this year. Uh, the website TechnoSearch archives the data from SETI and is open to the public and allows users to submit their own searches to keep the data updated. See, so, they're fucking releasing shit little by little because if they released it all at one time, people would freak. And that was so right. They, like, give it to us in little little spoonfuls and shit. You know no. what I mean? No. When they've known all this shit all along, they've been in contact <laughs> with aliens for, since Eisenhower, at least since that. Now, now t tell me this: when you hear the name Sequoia, a woman's name, Sequoia. Yeah. The, now, what do you think? Indian tribe. I know it's, but it's a woman's first name. Yeah. Is so, she Native uh, American? Uh, probably her parents were hippies. A tree or something. Probably her parents were hippies. Right. So that's, that's who wrote it, Sequoia Kennedy. <laughs> All right, well, that's enough said right there. I'm just saying. <laughs> Kennedy is the last name, Sequoia. I don't trust yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. All right. Sorry. Uh, all right, anyway, so, uh, yeah, this week, uh, Peter Tork, is that who was this? Yes, Peter it's Tork, P the bass player of yeah. the Monkees. Passed away. And they were actual musicians, people. And he Anyone was, that says that they were faking it, they they weren't. Yeah, well, Maybe whatever. at first when the show first started, that was the original idea of it. But as it turns out, they were musicians and they played their own music. So right. look it up, you motherfuckers that think that they didn't. <laughs> I'm a Monkees fan. I will be forever, always and uh, always. Just always I will be. Sure, sure. I have a Monkees mug, coffee mug that my best friend Heidi gave me. That's like from the late seventies or whatever. Right. That's one of my most valuable possessions. I love that thing. I love it. Cool. So I'm right. a monkey fan. Do not diss my monkeys. 
I'm not, I'm not trying to. R.I.P. Peter. All right. So, yes, indeed. Rest in peace, Peter. And, uh, hey, hey. Oh, wait, I don't have that song. All right. <laughs> I'm sorry. You can, you can request that one. You can play that one, Grim, if you want to. Uh, we're going to play what we got here. All so, right. Okay. Uh, everybody all got right. your tickets out. Everybody all, all aboard. Yes. Are you playing both of them or just one of them? Now, what the hell? All right. Wait, 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 what the hell's going on here? Oh, shit. No, I'm not. <laughs> wait, 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 wait a second. Uh, oh, my God. <laughs> let, let, let me just see. Peter was my second favorite monkey. My first favorite monkey was Mike. Not Mickey, but Mike. Not Davey, which all the girls were like, Davey, Davey. I'm like, no, Mike's cool. He wears a fucking hat. He's a badass, and he's a guitar player. Right. All Davey Jones did was fucking Trump playing <laughs> fucking tamarind. <laughs> Okay, let's try this again. Okay, all right. All right, here we here go. go. All right, enjoy, people. <laughs> ah, yeah, so nice, so nice. Bess Hart and Joe Bonamassa singing Close to My Fire live from Amsterdam. Uh, before that, we had a couple of monkeys tunes. Yes, indeed. Uh, both Moon School requests, by the way, but uh, both for a good cause uh, there. Uh, the monkeys, I'm a Believer, and uh, The Last Train to Clarksville. So, uh, yep. Rest in peace there, Mr. Monkey. Moose, you still with us? All right, let me just double check here. Yeah, you should still be with us, Moose. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> see how you're talking to me? Uh, uh, I'm, not, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not seeing anything. Most, most, most. Beijing most. <laughs> All right. I don't know where most went, uh, but she she must have wandered off or something. <laughs> I'm talking to myself. Oh boy, did she say she was going away? No, no, she didn't say anything. All right. Well, most, if you're there. Uh, speak up when you can, and, uh, and or let me know in the chat what's going on. If there's something else happening that's uh, that's that's not working out, because um, <laughs> I don't I I I I don't see uh, I don't see any uh, you're not you're not commenting in the chat, and you're not uh, and 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 you're not on the not on, on the wire for some reason, so. Uh, Okay. <laughs> oh boy, things happen. I tell you, she'll come back and say something. And she'll say, "Oh, I was blah blah blah." Uh, anyway, <laughs> all right. Probably she's probably probably talking to the dog or the kid or or something, something like that. One of the one of those things uh, that 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 she happens to do, and uh, so. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. All right. Okay. Well, we got the next set all set up, so uh, that'll be good when she comes back. I'll I'll, I'll go and I'll I'll talk about another story because I do that. I can do that. Yes, indeed. <laughs> oh, let's see what. I, oh, oh. Since we were talking about NASA and the aliens and all that fun stuff later, uh, uh just 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 a moment ago. Let's talk about this because it's one of my favorite topics in uh, the world. We're waiting. We're waiting on it to happen. We're waiting on it to, to occur, and and maybe maybe sooner rather than later. I I don't know. Um, but here it is from SputnikNews.com. Devastating giant asteroid could reduce cities on Earth to powder. Oh no. Anything but that. <laughs> yeah, Princeton University graduate physicist Jay Malosh's golden tips on how to avoid an asteroid collision with our planet and thousands of deaths. Thousands? I'm going to say a lot more than that if it's a giant asteroid. And, uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, thousands of deaths that would entail... Uh, that would entail have emerged only now, with the closest predicted, uh, with, with, uh, with the closest predicted year when it may actually happen being 2029. 
Yet NASA uh, came to believe several years ago that it's a bit more likely to occur in 2068. Well, 2068 will be too late. I'd be dead. I'd be 108 at that year. That year, 2029. That's kind of pushing it even, but we'll find out. Anyway, Jay Maloche is an American geophysicist whose scientific interests involve impacting impact cratering estimates. Played out a shocking scenario of a gigantic 370 meter wide asteroid. Yeah, that's a planet killer right there. Uh, codenamed Apophis. 99942 99942 hmm interesting number coming into direct contact with earth as early as 2004 when the asteroid was first spotted nasa uh, suggested that a collision might happen in uh 2029 with the further year changed to 2036 and finally to 2068 with the space agency admitting on the 21st of February 2013 that there is a 1 in 150,000 chance of a direct impact with Earth within 50 years' time. Earth years, that is. Oh, there she is. She had to go out. Uh, Maloche, who completed his uh, physics and geology degree at Princeton uh, University, outlined the scenario in Amazon Prime's asteroid trackers as early as 2009, but its relevance is particularly well felt as of today, as the first predicted collision uh, date is 10 years, just 10 years from now. In space, we would use a mirror, like a magnifying glass. As we hit the asteroid, we begin to vaporize material, and as it vaporizes, the asteroid would get pushed the other way. He said, <laughs> adding that all, all that needs to be done is the velocity of the asteroid to undergo a minute change of one centimeter a second. You know, good frickin' luck there, buddy. Cause, uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're, you're really gonna, you're gonna put a mirror up there and shoot, shoot a laser at it and try and, uh, melt some of, so, or somehow vaporize part of the asteroid. Come on. Uh, what, what kind of nonsense science fiction boogie you is that? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Maloche expressed certainty that this tiny annual shift away will push it off a collision course and could save Earth. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. He previously voiced a chilling assumption that if Apophis, or a sm similar sized space rock, did strike Earth, then it could wipe out a whole city, or the lion's share of one. No, it could do far more damage than that. What are you, nuts? Hello! <laughs> it says, he, he says, if something like Apophis were to strike a city, let's say it fell on Boston, dread, Judge Dredd, Hansel, if it fell on Hansel's head, it could create a 10 kilometer wide crater. Almost all oh, of Metro happen. Almost all of metropolitan Boston would be destroyed. Oh, what oh a, no. What a shame. Uh, what a shame. Oh, um, my God. That would suck. <laughs> Malosh shared, providing a <laughs> scary description of the way humans would feel should this happen, such as intolerable heat <laughs> like there were six suns in the sky. <laughs> Clothing would at night. You would suffer third degree burns. Yes, it would you would. Be, it would be ugly. It would be devastating. Uh, yes, it would be. Meanwhile, back in Earth here, the European Space Agency's <laughs> Near Earth Object Coordination Center is increasingly concerned about another space rock, the asteroid 2018 XB4, which was only discovered in December 2018. So, like uh -oh. two months ago. Run, the real life! <laughs> And, and is preliminarily estimated about 70 meters in diameter. And it has recently been included in the top 10 potentially most hazardous near-Earth objects, or NEOs, and currently ranks fifth on the list. Did you mute again, Moose? <laughs> I, God damn it! <laughs> here's, here's, that link. here's that link for you. See, so. just, I'm cursed. I'm cursed when it comes to technology. <laughs> I tell you. I'm cursed. That's why I have to have two technicians. Uh, so, yeah, I John. Have to have one. No, I have to have two. Yeah, I, maybe I'm, maybe I'm, it may. I'm, I'm fucking cursed. 
Uh, maybe instead instead of voting for the giant meteor, I'll have to start voting for the giant asteroid. There you go. <laughs> that would work too, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, fuck yeah. Meteor or asteroid. It should be giant meteor or asteroid. Exactly. We should market that, Graham. Let's start making those bumper stickers right now. I bet you'll make a million dollars. <laughs> oh, well, I already have a, I already have a, uh, a, a, a bumper sticker. It's on the window of my Jeep, uh, which was uh, for the giant meteor 20, 2016. Right. I remember that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> oh, man. Oh, God. Oh. <laughs> it's crazy shit. All right. Let's see here. Oh, oh, all right. Let's 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 do this. This is from earlier this week because we had because we had the full moon on uh, Monday. Yeah. No, not Monday. Tuesday. Tuesday was the full moon. Do you know, do you know what it was called? The winter moon or some shit. Super snow moon. Snow moon. Yeah. Super, that's what I meant. super oh, winter, snow right? moon. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, Ansel, being 20 miles away from something creating a 10-mile crater ain't going to save your ass. <laughs> no, it isn't. No, it isn't. 20 miles? <laughs> no, no, not at all. <laughs> you think 20 miles is going to save your ass? <laughs> not a chance. Anyway, super snow moon wows, wows the stargazers around the world. Biggest and brightest full moon of the year lights up the sky for a second night. Uh... The super snow moon lasted a few evenings, but was at its biggest and brightest on Tuesday. The, the second super moon of the year, and will be the most impressive super moon of this calendar year. Uh, the moon was fullest at 3.53 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time, so UK stargazers saw the moon at its best after the sun had set. Uh, people in the U.S. saw the super moon arise at 5.46 p.m. Eastern Time and set at 7.35 a.m., which do you really care? Anyway, no. Anyway, so uh, so the the name refers to the fact that the appearance often coincides with heavy snowfall, Moose Girl, around this time of okay. year. Okay, yeah. Well, it happened. I can prove that it happened. I have pictures to show it that it happened. And then that's according to the Old Farmer's Almanac oh, reference book. Yep. And uh, you know what? I believe that Old Farmer's Almanac. I tell you what, I read that fucking thing they're, about they're, what this upcoming winter was going to be, and it, said, it was exactly right. It was no, exactly fucking right. They're, they're they're right more often than not. They are. You know? They are very much right all the time. Like it's amazing how right they are. Like if you guys don't get it, you should really seriously for one year, just read the farmers on buy one of them, and look at it through the year and see if what they say happens. You'll be surprised. The old farmer, the old farmer's almanac, almanac is a very good tool to use, and it's been going since what the eighteen late eighteen hundreds or something. You know, Graham, it's been like yeah. around for a long time. Right. Anyway, so if you didn't see it, I, I actually did go out and take a look at the big full full ass moon out there. But it says the lunar marvel was expected to be the largest and brightest full moon of twenty nineteen due to the almost exact overlap of the moon's perigee, closest point to Earth, and, and uh, when it's at its fullest in the 28-day lunar cycle. What are you laughing at over there? Nothing, nothing. Oh, I heard some kind of weird noise. I thought it was laughing. This my dog is making noise in the background. Oh, I have well. a puppy. Yeah, he's not quite a year. His balls haven't dropped yet. That's what the phrase I was looking for, balls dropped. His balls are oh, they're semi-dropped. <laughs> Quit looking at the poor dog's balls. Well, yeah, you know, you got to make sure they're coming in. <laughs> All right, well, well, he can't help it when he lays on his back, you know. Yeah, he can't yeah. help it look down there. <laughs> <laughs> He's a dog. It's a dog. It's not like it's a person. It's a dog. It's not a human. It's a dog. Well, let me let me let me try and get this 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 moon here. Um, the moon. Oh, yeah, I wanted to post a moon pic, too. A really cool one. If, if I can get phone. But you know what? I won't be able to find it because it's buried right now. It's like shit goes so fast that you try to go back and find something. It's like good fucking luck, you know? Yeah. Shit gets buried so quick on fucking Facebook, on Twitter, and fucking all of it. This, all this, like Instagram. I won't do Instagram because you can't go back and look at shit. Like once you post something, 
Like, you can't take... Oh, that's a cool pic, Grim. If I can get it to that is a cool screen. picture. <laughs> that is a very cool picture. Even if it... Nope, nope, stop. Those were removed. I made sure that they were removed before I got... Because our dog, Marty, his dew claws weren't removed. And it was a pain in the ass to try to clip those fuckers. And he hated it. And it's just like, why didn't you have these dogs' dew claws removed? You know what I mean? It right. was, I was pissed at the former owner because, you know, or the former former person that, yeah. No, you you don't want Duclaus. I mean, he's not going to be a hunting dog. I'm not going to use him for hunting. I might for, like, he'd be fine even if he was hunting small game at this yeah. point. But, like, squirrels and shit, rabbits, but. So there, it looks like it's sitting on top was, of a. Oh, oh, that looks really cool. Yeah, that's, that's a really. That's, that's right that's on top a, of the freaking mountain there. Mount Mount Fuji. Well, that's a really pretty picture. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Here's one. Very cool. Let's see. This is uh, Switzerland. Ooh! Ooh! That yeah, looks. Yeah, it yeah. looks huge. <laughs> it does. It's fucking uh, huge. Uh, that one. It's just a picture of the moon above. Uh, uh, where the hell is this at? Los Angeles. Ooh, that's pretty. In, in L.A. Yeah, okay. fuck L.A. <laughs> it is all yellow on on top of the, uh, uh, what is this telescope? Uh, Malachoya Sak. I don't know. It's in Crimea, uh, uh, Ukraine. Oh, okay. That's, well, that's the, the color right there. That I color guess, is amazing. I guess Crimea, Russia at this point. <laughs> right, yeah, it is, basically. Yeah, it's Russia. Might as yeah. well fucking be. Right, and uh, here it is, uh, Rhode Island. That's on Rhode Island. Right there. Okay, yeah, but blood, a cityscape. Yeah. Meh. And here we are in uh, the Wor World Trade Center. Oh. Meh. Where, where the World Trade Center used to be. Oh, uh, meh. Meh, meh, meh. Manhattan skyline. <laughs> I mean, come on, really, people? Get over it. I mean, not get over it, because... I do believe people died, and I do believe that some of the first responders suffered greatly right? Um, because they showed up there and just the toxicity of the environment and everything, and yeah. there was long, and they don't talk about that in the media. They haven't talked about that much in the media at all. Right. Anyway. It happened, and it's been like 17 years, and you know what? Fuck you, bitch, because fucking people died and suffered long-lasting fucking health effects from the event, the ones that showed up to help. Right. And that's just, it's just, it's just like pouring salt into a wound, you know? Sure, sure. It's just like double whammy, fuck you, fuck you. You know? Yeah. Fuck that. It's fucking bullshit. And then this whole, the whole scenario I don't buy at all. Like, I know a plane, that small of a plane that they show that supposedly did all that damage to the Pentagon, Bullshit. The fucking Pennsylvania plane crash. Bullshit. There it is in Guadalajara, Mexico. You know, Building 7. No one talks about that. Of course the media is going to poo-poo that and hush right. like that. You right. Know? Oh, don't mention that. Don't mention that a building just out of the blue, five, eight hours later, all of a sudden fucking went to dust. Yeah, when no, when no planes ever hit it. Right, and what the fuck was that? I mean, to me, that's the biggest compelling thing you need to ask yourself is, what about Building 7? Because there is that footage where that motherfucker, uh, Rothschild, or whatever the fuck he is, Larry something, he fucking said, pull it. Silverstein, yeah. Silverstein. He fucking said, pull it. And so they did, and that building pancaked and went to dust. Because <laughs> it was it was it was rigged with explosives. Triggered by the moon. So don't give me no fucking bullshit. Yeah, there it is in London. Yeah. There it is in wherever the hell is this? And these engineers that have stood up and said Trafalgar called Square. it out and said it's bullshit. I trust them, motherfuckers. I believe them, them because you know, and I give them a lot of credit for doing that. I really do. Yeah. Because their, their lives are probably in danger. Or, you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's like, you know what, motherfuckers? There's in Rome. You guys should have thought about it. You should, you should have, like, enlisted some fucking architect or something to help you out. There it is in Shandong. Make it more believable because the shit you pulled off, 
it was a major thing, but it was it's not believable the story that you gave that explains it all. There it is in Shandong, China. Wow. Beautiful. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Here it is in uh Oh another Shandong one. Different angle. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. Pretty A boat out there. There's, there's yeah, the you know, the moon does weird things to me, Rob. I mean, i got to admit, you know, I've always been a fan of the moon. Look, there's going to so, crash. I mean, I know they're, what, they're gonna, you know, gonna, it doesn't affect me. I mean. They're going to crash the plane into the moon. No, they're not. Look Too at far away. It's going to crash the plane away. into the moon. Too far away. <laughs> what is that? Is that like the navel of the moon? You see that one circle on there? Mm. Is that like the belly button? This one here? The moon's belly button. Right there. It's the right. It's an asteroid. Right there. That's the moon's belly button. I asteroid guess. impact. Probably. You see, that could happen to Earth. Yep. Like, the moon sustained that asteroid impact for the Earth. That's how I look at it. That's the know. Empire State Building there. <laughs> it's a cool building. Although, the That's Empire it. State Building, I respect the Empire State Building. It's, it's a cool building. Because... What they had to endure, the builders of it, it's like a feat. It was like a major feat back in the day when it was built. And it was featured in King Kong. So, uh, well, you know, it, was, it was also I mean, featured. You know, like, you know. It, it was also featured in a, uh, a video game from uh, late 90s, I guess, called Hell Cab. Oh, okay. So you got to go, you got to walk all through the, the Empire State oh, Building. Nice. Yeah. And there it is in Las Vegas. <laughs> it looks cool though all those it is cool. trails going across that looks really nice ah it's beautiful yeah. <laughs> anyway there the moon's everywhere man. here let me give you a, let me give you a link to this so you can check out all the photos for yourself because they got some really cool wow. photo, photos that, there that color there wow oh yeah well that's the you know the smog yeah of course so, the chemicals well, in the it, air it, that's you know it's Manhattan so Oh, yeah, they're, well, New York. <laughs> yeah. Seriously, like, people call me from New York, right, and order boots and shit. And, like, they're like, I get a kick out of them when they say they're from Brooklyn. You know? Right. And they always live in an apartment. You know, there's an apartment number. I mean, if you live in Brooklyn, you live in an apartment. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, and it's just, you get a kick out, and then you get a kick out of these fucking, like, I watched this show on Showtime called Ray Donovan. Mm hmm. And the character is from South Boston. Okay? The a main Southie. character. He's and a the, Southie. And the family is from South Boston. They're from Southie, they call it. They call it yeah, Southie. Yeah, they're Southies. And they have this, they have this typical accent. It's a, it's, it's a Boston accent, but it's even more than that. It's got some Irish mixed in there. Uh huh. And they always say, sure, sure. And I can't even say it the way they say it. For like, sure. you'll ask them a question, and they'll <laughs> say, yeah, sure. And the way they say, sure, I can't even do it. But I talked to this guy the other day, and I swear he sounded just like Ray fucking Donovan in the show. He uh, he had the salty Boston accent. I was like, I was freaking out. I was like, this sounds like Ray Donovan. <laughs> Because <laughs> he said sure, the word sure like five times. Um, fr it freaked me out. I'm like, is this really fucking um, the actor of uh, that plays him? You know what I mean? But it wasn't. It wasn't him. <laughs> what? I missed it being stuck in But, you know, it's it's crazy because you talk to someone else from, like, Alabama. Oh, the moon. Right. And then it's, like, totally, um, you know, just the position, like, totally... <laughs> New York to fucking southern, the southern United States, you know, like the deep south. Right. Oh, how are you doing? And some of them are so soft spoken. It's like, what? Will you please talk louder? <laughs> Gobblers. Uh... You want to fucking tell them to talk louder? And then this lady today oh. calls and she's on a cell phone, and it was a bad connection, kind of, you know. And yeah. then so she's yelling into her cell phone. And I'm like, did I, at one point I said, okay, can we try the card number again? This time talk normally. Maybe I can hear you better. <laughs> <laughs> but she did. And I, thought, I, was, I was like, I was thinking to myself, there's no way in hell this order is going to happen. You know what I mean? Right, right. And then it finally did. I'm just like, oh, my God, thank God. 
<laughs> oh my God! It, oh, I tell you, customer service—you gotta love it. You betcha, baby. <laughs> oh yeah. All right, we're gonna people play. get irate. They call up and they're just fucking yelling at you on the phone. You're just like, <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! All right, we're gonna play some songs here. All three of these songs are brand new; just came out this week. All right, and and cool. and, and when was the last time you heard new music from Susie Quattro? Long time. A long ass time. Anyway, long she's coming out. Ass time. She's coming out with All a new right, album. Enjoy it, people. She's coming out with a new album, and uh, this is one of the tracks off of it. No soul, no control. Yeah, brand new there from Sammy Hager, hey, Sammy Hagar, and the Circle, his uh, current band. Yeah, Trust Fund Baby. Anyway, they got a brand new album coming out. Uh, b -b 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 May, I think it's coming out. Yeah, May tenth, twenty nineteen, and it's going to be their first album of uh, new and original songs by the band. Uh, they had another album where they had a lot of covers of uh, old Sammy Hager music. And uh, anyway, excellent. So Robin Trower, that that new from his new album, uh, well, the, the song is called Lonesome Road, and the new album also I do believe will be called Lonesome Road, and they don't have a release date listed here on that, uh, but you can pre-order it now there on uh, the U uh, via the link on the YouTube. Uh, Robin Trower, Lonesome Road, uh, is the video to look for there, and we kicked it off with a brand new one from Susie Quattro. Yes, Susie. Susie is uh, her forthcoming studio album called No Control. Uh, this uh, song was called No Soul, No Control. Uh, so uh, check it out there on, on the YouTubes. All three of those brand new just came out this week. Some today, some a couple of days ago. So uh, excellent stuff. Uh, you you got to love uh, new music. Well, I do anyway. I don't know. Anyway. Um. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, that's enough distraction for the for the chat there. Um, yeah. <laughs> Most girls done. Uh, well, uh, to say, to say. <laughs> I don't know, man. Just think it's just 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 say goodbye, goob. All right. There you go. Goodbye. All right. Um. <laughs> Oh man, I tell you, it's a strange world that we live in. Oh boy. Toke up. Toke up. Everybody, toke it. Toke it hard. Toke everybody, it hard. everybody. Come on, it's 8:40. That's right. It's almost 12:40. Yeah, we'll do we'll do a double. <laughs> All right, you you do that. I'm gonna play some music here. <laughs> And uh, we'll all be good. Um, all right. <laughs> oh, look at that. Oh, boy. Fun, fun, fun. I'm telling you. <laughs> all right. Uh, this is another set of sock puppet requests here. And, again, I, I, I don't really recall what the uh, if there's dedication to who they are and uh, what they're about. But uh, he could tell us there in the chat. This first one is Alice in Chains. All right, very nice there, very nice. Screaming in trees, I nearly lost you. A sock puppet request dedicated to nobody in particular for any reason in particular. Uh, before that was Tears for Fears. A good night song. He wanted that. Sock Puppet wanted that as a, uh, a parting thing, but uh, I played it a little bit early. Not that much. Anyway, we kicked it off with Alice in Chains and Bleed the Freak, uh, dedicated to the trolls in Real Liberty Media. And uh, I'd say perfect timing on that one. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> 
Uh, I, I say, man, there's a... Uh, hey, I had to say it. I, it's just been brewing in me and building in me, and I've put up and I've been tolerant, and I've given people chances, and, you know, there comes a point in time where they just don't get it. And it's like, you know what? I'm done. I, oh, I can't do this anymore. I understand. It, you know, yeah. It, this is not my first rodeo. Well, if you're you going to be going... you not fuck with me. You should yeah. not fuck with me. I am be... a moose girl. You do not know this from my name. <laughs> moose girl. Moose girl. Hello. <laughs> do not fuck with me. <laughs> I can take a lot of, of fucking... I'm, I'm tolerant. I've put up with it for a long time. That's Gave many long. chances. But when yeah. people just refuse to fucking learn, then, you know, you got to fucking take matters into your own hands. Sure. And this music festival that Rome is talking about here. Right. What's that called again? It's called the Smoky Run Music Festival. All and right. it's in Butler, Ohio. And it's from June 28th to the 30th. But the lineup is out of this world, people. I mean, we're talking big names. We're talking Government Mule, Trumpet by Turtles, Railroad Earth, Deer Tick, Sunvolt, Sierra Hall, Trevor McCurries. Jeff Austin Band. I mean, this is wh Horseshoes by hand and Hand Grenades, which is my Wisco boys. That's my be that's my boys. That's my that's boys. That's her boys. Yeah, and then Rumpy Mountain Boys, which are amazing. Rumpy Mountain Boys, Rumpy Mountain Boys are so amazing. Look them up. It's R U M P K E Mountain Boys. Look them up. I'm gonna post it in the chat. What's well, up? Okay. And that, that Jeff Austin, the Grateful Ball, they play like all Grateful Dead songs. All right. Then who else is there? Akusa Kuka Grimm. Yeah, I know. I love them. Yeah. I mean, you should make the trip. If I make the trip, dude, you should make I'm the trip, too. I'm not driving to freaking Ohio. You still have a camper? No, I don't. It got stolen, oh, remember? Oh, you stole it. What? No. Oh, yeah. That's right. Oh, yeah. That's right. Oh, well. But that would be an awesome festival. I'm not. It would be uh, very satisfying. Just saying. Yeah. Well, yeah. But you know, I would love to go there. Cause I want to start traveling. I don't not. I do not want to like be stagnant. Like when I had kids, I was like, okay, I signed up for an 18 year year gig. You know. Yeah, I know it's a lifetime gig. Yeah. But the point that they need me is 18 years. Like they need me to help them and take care of them. And you know what I mean? Yeah. But now that that's done, I can do whatever now. And I'll be damned if I'm going to put up with these stupid-ass customers anymore. You know, I can do it for a little bit, and I can handle it, but it's like, are you fucking kidding me? Like, one guy seriously called up because his boot, like, was defective. Yeah. And so, like, he called up, he's like, oh, I'm just wondering, man, I mean, can I, like, can they put a different colored sole on that boot? Right. I'm like, what? I'm thinking to myself, what? No, dude. We're not the manufacturer, for one thing. For another thing, the sole on the boot is the sole on the boot. They're not going to fucking put some other sole on this goddamn boot for you. Right. People call up and they ask the fucking dumbest ass shit. It's just, like, amazing. It's crazy. Oh. Okay, I want to do a little tech talk here before we run out of time. Okay, that's cool. I'm going to mute because, you know, I'm still, I'm still calming down. All right, all right, cool. Okay, okay. All right, so um, this week I, uh, on my, my, my little laptop over here that I run the Fluke Bot on, I, uh, I reformatted the hard drive. They wiped everything out. I, I had, it was an old uh, hard drive set up with a dual boot Windows and Linux uh, Mint uh, 18.3, I think. Um, and anyway, so I wiped it totally clean and, and reinstalled uh, the new Mint, Mint 19.1, on there, and um, it is freaking awesome. It's it's a it's a really really cool operating system for anybody that's uh, looking to, to change their operating system, or if you just got some spare space on your hard drive and you want to set up a dual boot. Uh, it's it's terrific, or or just run it run it in a virtual machine, uh, however you want to do it. 
Um, you, I guarantee you, you'll love the operating system. It does all. It's just super easy to use, and uh, it, it just everything just works terrifically. Uh, it uses a very very modern uh, interface, uh, design interface. I'm running the uh, Cinnamon. Uh, so so that 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 is awesome. And anyway, uh, I've been using Irfan View for many many years now uh, as a image viewer and editor for, for simple edits. Any any more complex edits, I use GIMP. But for simple edits, uh, I, I've been using uh, Irfan View for years. Anyway, I came across this other one, which apparently has been out there for a while, but I, I have never used it before. And it's called XNView MP. And um, it it's great. I, I, I've, I've, I've put it on both uh, uh, the, the Linux machine and, and also on the, on the Windows machine. And apparently they have it for uh, various other operating systems as well. Uh, let me give you a link to that. Because uh, if you do any kind of like image viewing and or uh, editing, simple editing. Like I say, if, if you're going to do more complex editing, you want something better uh, than, than XN view uh, I'm, or, 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 or Irfan view. Um, but uh, yeah, so check it out. You put that uh, put that on your computer and, and play with it. And you'll have a lot of fun if you like if that's fun to you, <laughs> it's fun to me. I, I really enjoy uh, messing with different software and, and also, uh, you know, editing photos that, as as necessary. So uh, check out XN View. Check out uh, Linux Mint uh, 19.1, and uh, you'll be glad you did. At least I think you will. Anyway, we got to hit our last set here. So uh, let's get on to uh, that right here, right now. And I know this is not necessarily a monkey's song, although we did play some monkeys here earlier. Uh, this is a, by a group called M4GW, or, if you prefer, Minnesotans for Global Warming. <laughs> what about Minnesotans? I'm Minnes not Minnesota. What, what? Minnesotans for Global Warming. Oh, yeah, I love that band. Okay, cool. Yeah, Bring it necessarily, on. not necessarily, oh, yeah. a, monkey, yeah. not necessarily a monkey song, but it's a monkey song. Hey, yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. It's a, it's a satire of a monkey song. Yipper. All right, let's hear it. <laughs> Christopher Amoroso there and his version of Black Betty. Uh, prior to that was Big Bad Voodoo Daddy doing diggy diggy doo diggy doo doo. <laughs> and we kicked it off with the uh, Minnesotans for Global Warming and I'm a denier uh, to the tune of I'm a Believer by the Beatles. And uh, yeah, uh, I, 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 I am a denier. I freely admit being a denier. And you know why? Because as it says in the song, it's all a hoax. Yeah. So uh, that's gonna that's gonna wrap it up. You got Moose? You still there, Moose? Still hanging out with us? All right. Well, I don't know where Moose is. Yeah. Sorry for the fucking train wreck show, people. Grim, don't even post this one. I'm posting this one. No, you, I don't think you should. I really don't. I don't think you should. You can if you want, but. It's just been a train wreck from the get-go because of the technical problems and all this other shit. You know? All right. You can if you want to, but... Okay. I'm just not happy about this show. I'm not happy about this one. <laughs> and this is a rare thing because usually I'm all like, yay! You know? Yeah. All right. So this is an example of how it's worn me down. Yeah, archive it. Don't fucking post it. Well, that's how I that's how I do it. Anyway, um, I know whatever. All right, that's fine. It's whatever. Okay. All right, good night, everybody. Good night, people. Peace. Peace. Try at least at least try. Peace.